Our first storyteller for tonight looks back 45 years on a very important day in Peace Corps history, which she witnessed firsthand, hand in hand, island hopping through the South Pacific, all on the government's dime. Please, <laughs> please welcome Tina Martin with But before I tell you, I have to give you some a feeling, a sense of a passage of time, because I know some of you are very young. I don't hold that against you. I was that way once myself. And I hope that's not the part of my story that sounds stranger than fiction. But before I tell you, I, I think the best thing I could do, I'm now 70 years old. But when I witnessed firsthand this uh, the important date in Peace Corps history, I was very young, and I was about the same age. If I could make a reference to the Titanic, I don't mean, I don't mean the well, 1912, but even I wasn't around for that. But I mean the one that they made into a movie in, 19, in 1997. At that time, Kate Winslet was 22 years old, and she played the romantic lead, which is what I wanted to play, which I did play on this important day in Peace Corps history. But now I realize that while I was 22 then, I'm sort of the grandmother of the person I was, and I'm more like Gloria Stewart, who played the part of the old, 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 old Rose, so I wrote a little verse about that. I used to be my granddaughter, the, the lead that was romantic, but now I'm not Kate Winslet, I'm the old Rose in Titanic. <laughs> but then we think of Leo DiCaprio, and even though he's a vegetarian and the co-executive of the producer of Cowspiracy, he's had to resort to eating the raw liver of buffalo, and, and he's also been attacked by bears. And he was the romantic lead in the Titanic, so I guess that's just the natural progression of time. <laughs> but before time began progressing, I had this very important day in Peace Corps history with another Peace Corps volunteer, Jim, when we were given a furlough in Honolulu between our time training for the Peace Corps in Molokai and our time serving in, the, in Tonga. We were given three days and we went on our first date. I know it was a date because he paid. <laughs> he used his living allowance. In those days, the peace for living allowance, in those days it wasn't considered a day unless the guy paid. If a woman, even a girl, we weren't women, we were girls, if a girl even offered to pay, she would emasculate the guy and he'd wind up doing something like the dishes. So, but we did have some free time during the day in Honolulu. We got away from our group, and we went to public parks, and we sat on public park benches and did what young couples do all over the world on park benches. We read aloud to each other. We read from a book called A Separate Piece, which Jim liked a lot, we read aloud to each other, and then we would kiss between chapters, or maybe pages or paragraphs, or sentences, or words. I remember one time, Jim said, because we don't have any other place to do it. And then he turned back to me and he said, that's an answer to their unspoken question. Why don't you kids do that somewhere else? <laughs> so that's what we did during the day. And then in the evening, we saw a lot of movies, because we knew in Tonga, we wouldn't be able to see many since there wasn't any electricity. But after three months of Peace Corps training, we had, had a chance to see the films that we had missed that fall of 1969, recent releases. So we saw Cactus Flower with Goldie Hawn, who's the mother of Kate Hudson, who is also the mother of some kids who were probably about the age Jim and I were when we had this important date in Peace Corps history. And then we also saw Bob and Ted and Carol and Alice about some privileged Los Angeles couples who were trying to swing with the sexual revolution. 
And then we saw Barbara Streisand in Hello, Dolly, when she was about 20 years too young to play the middle-aged widow. And now she's 20 or 30 years too old, or according to casting, I'm sure not according to Barbara. So that's what we did at night. And then the last night, we went out to eat again, and we, after I had had my third Mai Tai and Jim's second one, he told me the story of his life, and I fell asleep in his arms right there in the back booth of the restaurant, and I thought that was very romantic. In my Mai Tai state, I had an excuse for falling asleep, and but Jim didn't think it was romantic. He thought it was an insult to his life story. <laughs> and he said, just wait, Tina. After a few weeks in Tonga, my life story will be a lot more interesting, and nobody will fall asleep when I tell it. So then we joined our group. There were another 30 volunteers, and we, we boarded the flight Pan Am to Fiji. We rearranged the seating so that we could sit together and sleep together on purpose the way everybody does nowadays because there's not room not to, right? Mm -hmm. And then, when it was morning, we woke up in Fiji and we had breakfast together with about 30 volunteers as our chaperones. And then we boarded Fiji Airlines to go to Tonga and begin an experience that would enhance our life story. So when we landed in Tonga, after we'd been welcomed, they put us on a bus and they sent us down the down the island, and it really looked the way it was supposed to look, different from back home. And I saw coconut palms, banana trees, coral sands, and donkeys. Oh, maybe they were Tongans, not Tonganese. And I saw a cart pulling a horse, <laughs> pulling a cart. And I said to Jim, oh, Jim, it's the way it's supposed to be, which it never is. You always expect foreign countries to look strange and exotic. And they always wind up looking like L.A. or Columbia, South Carolina. <laughs> and Jim said, yeah. And I said, but this, this really is strange and exotic. And he said, yeah. Now, I interrupt myself to say that we do not use the E word anymore. We know that exotic is a word used by people who do not understand the culture that they are describing and feel a, a misplaced superiority to it. But in those days, I meant no harm, no harm. And I looked over at Jim, and he looked kind of strange and exotic to himself. So I realized he had culture shock. So I didn't say anything more. And we didn't see each other again until it was noon. And all of the peaceful volunteers were gathered together at the Wayan Motel in Tonga Tapu, and he sat with me. And then, during lunch, he leaned over the papaya and he said, Tina, you are the best day I've ever had. Dinner in Hawaii, breakfast in Fiji, and lunch in Tonga. And I said, oh, we should do this more often. <laughs> but we didn't do it again. We didn't have another date until Valentine's Day of 1972 because we were assigned to different islands. And I stayed on mine for two years, but he left his early after six months. And he got into a play, a musical in Chicago. I didn't have time to tell you about this, but I'll just tell you this much. He got into a play in Chicago and it went on to New York. And by the time I had finished my two years of service, it was about to open. That sounds like good planning. So he invited me to be his date on opening night and go to Sardi's, which we did. I knew the, new, the play was going to be a flop because I heard the title. It was a dumb title. But it went on to have 3,338 uh, uh, productions, or not productions, but what do you call it, represented uh, each night, 3,338 3, nights. And it was also revived in 1994 and again in 2007. So I guess it wasn't a flop. And neither was our date. But in spite of the fact that Sardi's on Valentine's Day 1972 was pretty exciting, it doesn't, it isn't more exciting than the one that the Peace Corps and you taxpayers, thank you, <laughs> on both sides of the international day line. When we had dinner in Hawaii, breakfast in Fiji, and lunch in Tonga. Put that on WikiLeaks. <laughs> <laughs>